Finding a hidden area in a game is a wonderful feeling. Delving into the depths of a video game's world far beyond what the story expects you to do, and coming across a secret area can be more satisfying than the noise of a PS1 starting up or seeing Crash pull gems out of his own hidden areas. We at Triple Jump have already covered a few secretive locations with our 10 greatest easter eggs in video games list, which you should go and watch after this one of course, but I for one believe we can go a step further. A simple ground rule to announce before we begin though, any secret areas that require glitching, hacking or no clipping to reach them are out of contention, so apologies to the ever creepy Gabe Newell room. No, today we're here to talk about those zones that are a little out of reach, but still attainable if you really try hard. So with that housekeeping out of the way, let's begin. I'm Peter from Triple Jump, and here are the 10 best secret areas in video games. Number 10, The Princess's Secret Slide, Super Mario 64. Alright, so most of you will know this one, as Super Mario 64 is, after all, one of the most beloved video games of all time, and this secret comes very early in the game. You also get a very obvious message hinting at its location, but if the almighty Bowser can't even find it, then who am I to argue with its level of secrecy? And that aside, this list isn't necessarily about the areas that are best hidden, but merely the best areas that happen to be hidden. Do you understand? That sounded way more complicated than it really is. The slide is located in a room with three identical stained glass windows depicting Princess Peach. Or is it Princess Toadstool? Anyway, jumping through the furthest right of this trio of windows will take you to the Princess's secret slide. Completing this nifty little course will reward you with a Power Star, and in the Nintendo DS version, a second Power Star for doing it in under 21 seconds. Definitely a So Solid crew reference by Nintendo there, I'm sure. So, though not particularly hard to find, the Princess's Secret Slide is a classic hidden area, and one that made our younger selves beam with pride for figuring out the puzzle. It's an iconic moment from a cherished game, and well worthy of its inclusion on this list. Indeed, it may be one of the first secret areas in any game that you ever found. Let us know in the comments below. And also, while we're here, Mario, I'll let your scandalous use of a triple jump go unpunished at this time, but if I see it again, I'm calling our lawyer. Number 9. The Secret Hall of Developers, Serious Sam 3. The most common tribute to a game's developers comes in the form of a photo gallery. Saints Row 4's secret developer room included rows of devs' faces set in the style of a shooting range. Quake 2 has an interactive gallery of portraits, and the Talos Principle included a whole hidden map complete with TV-headed robots sporting the dev team's images. Interestingly, what the Talos Principle and our titular Sirius Sam 3 have in common is they are both from the same studio. Crow team. Crotiam? Cr I don't know. Core of the Crow team uh, series same franchises. Yeah, that, that's what I said. The Croatian developers have a unique way of crediting their staff, and they did something especially interesting for this particular edition of their signature franchise. By flinging yourself off a set of stairs and through a precariously placed window frame, you'll find yourself in the secret hall of developers. Upon entering this clandestine chamber, a series of malformed, giant-headed humanoids approach you, sporting the faces of the Kuratim. staff members, wearing the clothing of our protagonist and muttering some incoherent gargles. Thankfully, they can't harm you. Not physically, anyway. But the vision will continue to haunt my dreams. Number 8. World 1-1 Dying Light this 2015 first-person shooter zombie parkour em up by Techland released to fairly positive reviews, though nothing conclusive, with some praising its ambition and execution, and others lamenting its slightly tedious story missions. One thing we can certainly agree on, though, is the entertainment brought by this obscure hidden area. Tucked away within an inconspicuous chimney lay a smaller, more recognisable one. <laughs> yes, that is one of the famous green pipes from Super Mario, but it doesn't stop there. 
By channeling your inner Dick Van Dyke and doing your best worst Cockney accent, you descend the chimney and happen upon a 3D recreation of World 1-1 from Super Mario Bros, complete with zombies cosplaying as Goombas and an evocatively placed series of climbable blocks. Yes, it's visually a bit rubbish. Yes, there's a flowing river of blood beneath your feet. And yes, the zombies look ridiculous, but it's still a lovely little inclusion. How often can you say you've parkoured your way around Super Mario's most famous level during a zombie apocalypse? Number 7. Retro Stages – Doom 2016 there are 13 secret stages scattered around Doom 2016. 13! There's in fact a throwback stage located somewhere in every level of the game, and because of their elusive whereabouts, it wouldn't be too surprising if you'd never even seen a single one of these mysterious zones. If you were to locate one of the many concealed levers and proceeded to pull it, you'd be treated to a lovely nostalgic chime that goes like this. Which means that somewhere in the level, a door has opened. This newly unveiled entranceway gives access to an area from the original iconic shoot 'em up, complete with its trademark graphical style. It doesn't contain the original music or enemy sprites, but the novelty of seeing these secret levels is enough for the sentimentality alone. It wouldn't be remiss to describe these areas as esoteric, as their appeal at this point in time is relatively niche. After all, the original Doom came out way back in 1990 when a significant chunk of Doom 2016's audience were just a glint in their parents' eyes. The reimagining of Doom delighted audiences from the get-go. Its explosive, no-nonsense attitude was a breath of fresh air in a world that was saturated with bland, expressionless, grey-brown first-person shooters. Homefront the Revolution did come out the same month, after all. But despite this facelift being well received, it's always nice to take a little trip down memory lane, and the retro stages in Doom 2016 allow you to do just that. Number 6. The Ghost Room – Call of Duty Finest Hour Call of Duty Finest Hour is technically an expansion for the first Call of Duty on PC, using the same framework but sporting an entirely new campaign. It also became the first in the series to hit console, so you can thank it for kickstarting the titan that the series has become today. This game's hidden area, though, is far less accessible to the masses than the Call of Duty franchises as a whole. It requires a few grenade throws and the pressing of an unprompted action button upon a certain in conspicuous wall. Once inside the ghost room, though, you'll find all manner of creepy goings-on. Floating candles, a giant rat in a cage, a teddy bear under the picture of a baby which triggers the caption, this bear is adorable, and creepiest of all, a man in a cot with the head of an infant that disappears into thin air. You do get something other than an eerie sense of dismay from the ghost room, though, that being a couple of new shiny guns and exploding teddies the Kaiser Bear and the Sticky Bear. The Call of Duty series does like to make things scary from time to time, they've got their famous zombies mode of course, but this might just take the cake. Sinister music, an unsettling tone, and our protagonist declaring, This is easily the creepiest thing I've ever seen. You know what friend? I think I agree. Number 5. Moon in a Mountain just cause for. If you'd asked me before today whether Stanley Kubrick worked for Avalanche Studios, I'd have said, no way, but how else would they get such a good scale model of the moon? This must be the one they used. Conspiracy theories aside, this secret area within the fourth installment of the Just Cause series is a sight to behold. Shooting a tiny red X on the side of a certain mountain will reveal a long sci-fi looking tunnel that will either be dark if it's daytime or illuminated if it's night. At the end of this passageway is a small laboratory, complete with scientists and lab equipment observing a small scale model of our moon. You can break the glass surrounding the lab and grapple your way onto the moon's surface if you desire. It only has a mild gravitational pull, so feel free to fling the science nerds into orbit to your heart's content. The small-scale satellite itself glows, and the colossal room in which it resides is speckled with white dots to represent stars, giving the whole scene an ethereal feel. Just Cause has always allowed you to cause chaos wherever you go, but now you can even do it on the moon. And remember, in space, no one can hear you in space. Number 4. More Retro Stages – Streets of Rage 4 
move over Doom. In April 2020, Streets of Rage 4 released to much acclaim. The revival of this classic franchise was treated with all the care and due diligence that the devoted fanbase could possibly have wished for. It's a throwback in the truest sense, and can proudly stand as a testament to what a revived retro release can accomplish. What it also gave us though was a return to hidden areas, something that despite the cherry-picked entries in this list, seems to be becoming rarer with each passing year. Stashed away within Streets of Rage 4 are four classic arcade machines bearing the moniker Bare Knuckle. If you thwack one of these monoliths to a bygone era with a taser, you'll be transported to a special boss room torn straight from Streets of Rage 2, complete with 16-bit graphics and a more traditionally stylized soundtrack. Oh, lovely stuff. Manage to defeat one of these mini-bosses and you'll get a special attack star or some more health. Fail and you'll be sent back from where you came. These hidden retro rooms imbue that whimsical sense of nostalgia. Not specifically because of the art style or music, but because of the memories it brings back of swapping video game rumours in the playground. No, Ben, there isn't a secret boss in Mortal Kombat. I don't care what your uncle said, you're talking out of your... Look for the shadow on the moon. Oh, this is a load of... Wait a minute. Number three, the bottom of the pit, Mortal Kombat. You don't get more famous than this. Way back in 1992, arcade goers were faced with a cryptic challenge bequeathed to them by an elusive foe known only as Reptile. They were given a series of in-game clues and were left to figure it out from there. A few of these being perfection is the key, fatality is the key, look to la luna, blocking will get you nowhere, and tip et foe martab. So, with a deer stalker on your head and a pocket full of coins, you headed to the pit stage to begin your quest. As it happens, the shadow on the moon only appears every sixth game, so you may as well kiss your money goodbye for the first five. After you reach the stage on the correct turn, though, there's just the small matter of getting a double flawless victory without blocking, at which point you'll enter the fabled tip at top. sorry, bottom of the pit. There you'll challenge Reptile for the chance to gain 10 million points and schoolyard notoriety. The bottom of the pit is a great hidden area and Reptile an iconic secret boss, and the playground rumour and hearsay just doubled down on how cool making this discovery really feels. Number 2. Inverted Castle, Castlevania Symphony of the Night Imagine the outrage if a game were to come out today that hid away half of its content. <laughs> oh wait, they already do that, don't they? It's called Day One DLC. At least you don't have to pay an additional fee to access Castlevania Symphony of the Night's Inverted Castle. Most people could play through Symphony of the Night multiple times without ever realising the second section of the game exists. If Alucard defeats the quote-unquote final boss Richter Belmont in the conventional way, the game will just end. But if you were to find a series of items before the fight, then you would face an entirely different challenge. Firstly, collect the Silver Ring and Gold Ring. Both are optional and require some exploration. Equipping them will give you access to a hidden location within the marble gallery. Inside you'll find the Holy Glasses, an item vital for accessing the inverted castle. While wearing the glasses in the battle with Richter, you'll see a floating orb above his head. Destroying the orb will free him and unlock the second part of the game. The existence of such a twist was certainly a bold move by the developers, and should be revered for its sheer audacity alone. I'd give Konami a pat on the back myself, but considering what they are today, they'd probably try to charge me for the pleasure. And number one, Arch Dragon Peak Dark Souls 3. Ash Lake, the painted world of Ariamis, untended graves, yes, the Dark Souls series is packed with expansive hidden areas, but none more so than Arch Dragon Peak. I understand that the underlying premise of Dark Souls is distant player interaction with its messaging system, but considering the limited options of messages you can put down, it's still a wonder to think how anybody could work this one out without a wiki. Defeat the optional boss Osiris the Consumed King in his titular 
garden and you'll be able to grab the path of the dragon gesture. Now just head back to the cliffside in the Erythile dungeon area and perform the gesture on the blanket and you'll be transported to a secret area by the power of cutscene. Considering you're given no hint as to how to do this in the game, it seems almost unfathomable that you'd discover this location alone, and you'd be missing an awful lot if you did. Arch Dragon Peak contains a vast new location, unique enemies exclusive to this area, weapons and loot, and two bosses, one a challenge, the other less so. The Nameless King is arguably the most difficult boss in the base game, and the scale of the battle itself is breathtaking to see. It would definitely be a shame to miss this one. So there we have it, but let us know in the comments below if you think any other hidden areas in games deserved an inclusion. Maybe the best ones haven't even been discovered yet. You can follow myself and Triple Jump on Twitter here, and if you want to support the things you enjoy, then check out the rewards on our Patreon. Finally, don't forget to like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to the channel. I've been Peter from Triple Jump, and thanks for watching.